Well, good evening, everybody, and um, it's an absolute pleasure being with you. Um, I'm David Sines. I'm provost at Buckinghamshire New University, but I also chair a rather new but quite important um, organisation that combines amazing talent in the county for health and social care. But before I go into that, we need some continuity. I was thinking about the questions and the issues that you were discussing prior to the evening, and I was minded of an event that Jenny Craig and I attended last Wednesday at the Swan Theatre in Buckinghamshire, or in High Wycombe. And you may have noted on the news that the university um, installed a new chancellor, which celebrated both inclusivity, diversity and equality, and that was Jay Blades. Now, the university brought real talent to the forefront to be the lead and ambassador for the university. But during the very early part of the afternoon, just as we were about to start the actual proceedings, we were invited to have a pre-drink as, I hate to say this, but VIP, whatever that means. Well, of course we weren't the VIPs, but we were soon to be astounded because within a few minutes of congregating, we recognise real talent from your world actually appearing on the mezzanine floor. So, Dame Judy Dench, um, can you just imagine? So, 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 so David Jason, and we did have Mary Berry as well, of course, as one of our local celebrities. But we also had other major and key people who were actually providing real support in the television and, of course, Phil World. But the point I'm trying to make here is that Jay Blades, with his own voice, his own diversity, was able to attract such senior A-listed actors to actually support him in his actual congregation and actual installation of Chancellor. So I think within the county, or here later from Jenny, there is significant support, of course, for the film industry and for the creative arts, which I think is going to be an important way forward for us all as we start to celebrate <laughs> the arts in their own right. I also want to say very briefly the important point that was made just before we broke, which related to the importance of practice-based learning, experiential learning and simulation, because there is no better way of actually achieving a really high-level career than starting by really engaging in those practical-based subjects. Of course, as you'll hear from me in a moment, we do have to underpin some of the work that we're undertaking with STEM subjects, but do you know what? So what? They're only useful if they can actually be applied in the real world where critical decision-making and risk assessments have to be undertaken. You can't learn that just from your STEM subject. It's about the application in learning and in practice. And that's what I think our local universities and our colleges are really all about. Applying a pragmatic approach to what I describe praxis, which is linking practical realisation and creativity to, of course, an underpinning of sound knowledge. Well, fine by all of that. So what were we about? Well, about seven years ago, we made a decision in the county that we needed to start to take a rather different approach to inclusivity, diversity, and equality. Now, you, I'm not going to go down the actual traditional route, which of course is valuing cultural diversity. We actually decided we need to apply it at a very different level, which was to start asking questions about how can we bring together disparate voices to build communities and to build a community of interest, not just by the multi-talented cultural diversity represented in our county, but also by the agencies who have a similar challenge when they start to come together to actually have an informed conversation. You may find that a very strange thing, but actually when you bring individuals together from different agencies to start to develop a community of practice, a community of interest, and to have real meaningful joined up conversations, you have to start and a very, very straightforward premise. And that is to value the actual voices, to value the differences, to value the difference in opinion, and also to be willing to stand up and actually hear exactly what other people's points of view are. So it's about managing disparity. It's also about valuing disparity. 
It was about building community. So we came together then, about three years ago in Bucks, for a very good reason. We knew that at some point, now past, the government would be passing primary legislation in the form of the Health and Care Act. I'm not going to tell you all about that. I could. That's not what I'm here for. But that Act of Parliament actually entered the statute book in July last year. What it did was actually quite significant, or what it will do would be quite significant, because it brings together for the first time in the history of the National Health Service in England the requirement for our social care colleagues and our NHS colleagues and our primary care colleagues who work in general practice within the NHS to come together to form a new integrated care board to make decisions that are joined up. Easier said than done. Because when you start to identify how you bring people together, you realise there is one way of doing that that's quite a common form of language. And that's to focus on personal and professional development and education and training. Something I think I've been very well versed in my career of realising that is something that unifies people together. When you're starting to develop workforces that can work to the top of their licence and to work beyond that when you provide opportunity. So, who are our providers in Buckinghamshire? Very briefly, the providers of our health and social care are Buckinghamshire NHS Hospitals NHS Trust. I was one of their non-exec directors for nine years. So we've got Stoke Mandeville. I won't go into them all, but you get the concept. Mm -hmm. A very big organisation. In fact, it's a monolithic organisation. In fact, it dwarfs other organisations who need to have an equal voice at the table. So general practice, we have across the county in excess of 69 general practices. But you know what? They rarely speak to each other. They were constituted not to speak to each other because they were dragged in to the NHS in 1947-48. And they've always maintained their independence throughout. Well, fine, not a problem. But now the time has come, one, for them to be valued, to see they're valued, and also to bring them into the corporate decision making with our health and social care colleagues. Social care, even more disparate. Think of the cash we have in Buckinghamshire. And think of how many people are living in forms of independent living, in care homes, nursing homes, and across diverse particular groups of interest. Enormous number of individuals who require education, training, and to be valued just alongside our registered nurses, our doctors, and others. So we have to break down barriers. They're the providers, but then the education providers who really do come together are crucial. So we've got our Buckinghamshire College Group, and you'll hear from Jenny later on, the principal. We've got Buckinghamshire New University. We've got the University of Bedfordshire. Now, of course, some of us compete with each other as universities. Well, some healthy competition is fine, but it's not when it starts to restrict the opportunity to focus on the real needs of Buckinghamshire and what its citizens require. So we brought colleagues together into a room, and we had a very serious conversation from chief executive down, chief executive of the council, for example, chief executive of our NHS Trust, and so on. And we reached an agreement in principle two years ago to form a voluntary alliance of all of the organisations that are responsible for commissioning and providing um, health and social care in the county in total partnership and equal partnership, not only with each other, but with the education providers I've just mentioned to you. We've also been working in partnership with our local enterprise partnership, our LEP, and also with Health Education England that provides, until the end of this month, by the way, the education resources for healthcare in the NHS. They are then integrated into a new organisation from that date. So coming together took quite a bit of thinking, some creativity and courage, but we were determined to maximise the credibility, the competence and capacity of each organisation, but more importantly, to increase the capacity, competence and capability of the corporate organisations to become a health and social care academy, inverted commas PLC, for the needs of our citizens in Buckinghamshire. So we have now achieved that. In fact, on the 22nd of this month, we'll be meeting at Jenny's College in Ellsbury, um, 
plenty of plugs tonight, but um, um <laughs> at the college. Um, but why not? Neutral territory between the universities, one could argue, and between health and social care. I think you might pick up the nuances as always challenge, always competition, but one has to acknowledge that and move forward for common purpose. But we will be meeting on the 22nd of this month to actually agree our final um, our final stage of our decision making to form a new social enterprise within the county as a community interest company for the talent spotting, development of talent, education and training for the whole combined health and social care workforce in the county. One final thing I'm going to mention, I think it's of interest. I recognised at a very early stage that bringing the corporate organisations together was vitally important, but we needed to get to the hearts and minds of our citizens in Buckinghamshire. Because as we could wrap our offer around local needs and local communities and networks, we'd be missing a big trick. So we developed a faculty of volunteering within the academy, which is actually sponsored by one of our Deputy Lord Lieutenants, Ruth Farwell, who has been amazing. She was a previous High Sheriff in the county. I've known Ruth for many years. But Ruth actually brought to our talent pool a new voice. We have now developed, delivered over £400,000 of income, of cash to support local charities, to develop major partnerships with our faith groups and with local organisations, which we develop health and social care, support the anti-obesity campaigns, develop sports and exercise facilities, and reduce loneliness and psychological challenge. That's what this is about, but to do that, we have to train and educate carers and members of the volunteer workforce as well, to have opportunities to progress potentially into health and social care careers themselves, but also to work to the top of their license as expert members of our local communities. A new gateway into our health and social care services by developing competence, capacity, and ability to work together. Um, all of our work has to be outcome measured, easier said than done, but quite seriously, you would not get the council, you would not get Jenny's board supporting this or any other partner unless we could demonstrate our income is actually leading to measurable outcome and community benefit. So we do have a major part of our role actually linked to evaluation of all that we actually do. So for me, my messages are clear. You can transfer these to any sector, not least the community that you currently serve here. To me, developing a talent pool and a community of interest requires you to be very, I think, bold, courageous, and actually to recognise you're going to come up across competitive challenge, whether it be within particular providers in your industry or health and social care, is not an excuse not to get round the table to really identify what you're trying to do. What you need to do as well, and you're doing this already, you'll hear more in a moment, but we do have to develop our local skills pool. One, we need to identify how younger people can actually enter our professions and our workforce, because we need to retain them in the county. That is something we often forget. I'm sure you don't, but it's something we have to ask the question, why would you remain in the county? It's a wonderful county, but we still export a lot of talent. I'm sure you're all aware of that. So this is about identifying opportunities from eight years on, never mind the teenagers that we find in our schools, but eight is probably the start time when we need to start getting the messages for our new careers to make them exciting, stimulating, digitalised to actually meet people's actual energy and commitment levels, but very importantly, to provide local opportunity through work-based learning programmes, apprenticeships, and practice-based learning, which I heard so much about earlier. So it's not all about going straight for your STEM subjects, I agree completely. They do have their place, they're very important as part of an underpinning knowledge for a licence to practice, but Think about this, our medical education is all practice-based. It is an apprenticeship. If we forget that, one of our senior professional, um, obviously career trajectories, underpinned by highly competent the acquisition of knowledge in anatomy, physiology, etc., it's still an apprenticeship. It only works because people have the chance from the very early stage to dip their toe into the water and start experimenting under a risk management protocol but to start learning when things go wrong, how to correct them, but of course to minimise risk at the very beginning. Risk taking is experiential, it needs to be built into simulation, and I think the facilities that this county offers to you all was really going to be exciting to take this forward. 
Um, our academy has worked. I hope so. I looked to Jenny carefully, but it seems we're just about to start that new trajectory. But you know what? We are ready now to take on our new health and sorry, our new health and care board, because our integrated health and care board, or care board, represents three counties: Buckinghamshire, Oxfordshire, and West Berkshire. We're absolutely clear that we're not going to wait for others to tell us how to do our job here. We've got our own academy now that can stand up for itself with its partners all signing up on the basis of consensus to develop corporate capacity and capability to deliver locally for our local citizens. And that's, I think, the combination of localism, regionalism, because we have to commit to regionalism with our, in, with our integrated care partnership across those three counties, and also, of course, be able to export that talent and disseminate it across our health and social care services both within England and the UK and beyond. So, leaving those thoughts with you, um, I'm afraid I have to leave you pretty soon, but I'm sure Jenny can pick up specific questions no, on how we're working together, because that's what this is about. It's, a, it's actually a case study in true collaboration and partnership, but it's not always been an easy journey. And I must be frank, we've had to listen, we've had to develop a new corporate language, and also decode certain languages, language codes that have been an assumption. I'm going to leave you with this final example. Excuse me when I say this, but this is an actual fact. About seven years ago, I was asked to attend a conference and to develop how we might develop, we heard about the Oxford University Dictionary, a new thesaurus of health and social care terms. Actually, it's over 10 years ago, to develop clinical coding so they could be a language code on digitalised care records. Does that make sense to everybody in principle? Well, I forgot all of that. Went along to this uh, very interesting seminar. Um, there were two guys presenting from Manchester. Well, I can't possibly even begin to think about the accent. But the two guys said, you know, I'm a social worker. And the other guy said, and I'm a nurse. And he said, we were asked to actually come together to start describing how we would describe a person's journey when we were considering their care and health care needs. And this is what was said. He said, but do you know we have to get over some really very basic principles? We couldn't even agree on what the word counselling meant. He said, for the social worker, counselling meant a journey to enlightenment and experience. To me, the nurse, he said, it meant a bollocking in the office. <laughs> I'll leave that with you, but there's something quite important about joining up. Excuse that, but I think it's important to illustrate a point. I can assure you the social care code and the health care code do not always resonate as easily as you might think. Hence, valuing difference, learning to listen, and learning to adapt is critical in any partnership activity. Thank you very much.